his kids are growing up here, in Uganda, an East African nation of bustling urban centers and lush countrysides, home to about 35 million busy people. Uganda is also home to an estimated 40,000 children living in orphanages. It might seem sad, but the real tragedy is that up to 80% of those children aren't there because they don't have family. They're there because their families are poor. In traditional Ugandan culture, vulnerable children are cared for by their community. Orphanages are overwhelmingly a Western response to a Ugandan problem. And orphanages have become a big business. The United Nations and other organizations have well documented the harm that growing up in institutional care can have on a child's emotional and mental well-being. Gift was one of these children. After her parents died, she was taken to a local orphanage by an uncle who thought that would be the best place for her. But through the intervention of a Ugandan social worker, Gift has been taken to live here with her grandmother instead. <laughs> Gift is one of the lucky ones. Although she is back with a loving family, there are still thousands of children living in Ugandan orphanages. My name is Amanda. In 2010, I spent one year living and working in rural Uganda. Moving into a new culture meant learning a lot of new things. One thing that surprised me were the orphanages that I saw. Because I worked in community development, I knew that new technology and new medicines meant Ugandans were living longer and better able to care for their children. What I couldn't understand was, if people are supposed to be living longer, then why were there so many orphanages? Aren't families the best place for kids? <laughs> so when I returned to Uganda eight months after I left, I wanted to know why there were so many orphanages. We don't need them. We can survive without them, and those children are far better off not in orphanages. They're far better off in their homes. I know that where I grew up, 95, um, it wasn't just me. There was children who knew they had family. And 95% of those children would always have wanted to go back home. There are very few social services in Uganda, especially in rural areas. And poverty makes families vulnerable to exploitation. An orphanage to a poor village family can be very appealing because they're looking at these children with new shoes, new clothes, toys, three meals a day, mosquito nets, uh, medical care, and they think, gosh, you know, that's a great place to put my child. But even the most well-run orphanages with new toys and volunteers and good food can't replace what a child is losing emotionally, intellectually, and socially when they're not being raised in a family. And in other scenarios, families might see less well-run orphanages receiving donations and Western volunteers and make the assumption that that's where their child is better off. It's sad because the, the, the part that they're missing is that the child is probably not being well taken care of. Yes, you know, they might have mosquito nets, they might have toys, but if the child's not being carried and loved and hugged and kissed and talked to, and then, then what are they really getting? They're just getting these extra amenities that don't really matter so much, you know, in the, the um, for the, the, the soul, the heart, the, the person of the child, you know, for this small child. Even orphanages that don't take in a lot of money are still problematic. Sometimes money orphanages take doesn't get to the children, or needy-looking children are used as a way to attract sponsorship money and foreign volunteers. Children raised in institutions are far more likely to have social and behavioral abnormalities such as disturbances and delays in social and emotional development, aggressive behavior problems, inattention, and hyperactivity. The Ugandan government is now trying to regulate orphanages and educate Ugandan families who might be struggling financially about how they can best parent their children without having to give them away. But as I learned, outside people have played a big role in keeping orphanages open. We in the West have a lot of ideas about how to solve poverty in Africa. Supporting things that tug at our heartstrings, like orphanages, can end up doing more harm than good. The whole phenomena of orphanages in Uganda has been created by the West, by us. We are responsible. Most of them have been set up by well-meaning Christians through churches who believe that 
the orphans are coming out and growing on trees and just falling from the sky. You know, they think they're everywhere. And um, so it's, it's, it's miseducation because when we hear this figure, two and a half million orphans in Uganda, we're told that all the time in America, in the UK, in Europe, wherever, we don't realise that the majority of those are being cared for within the extended family or within kinship adoption. We don't realise that. Because Uganda have had their own system of looking after children without, without parental care for decades. They've taken in kids from extended family. They've taken in their neighbours' kids. They've taken in their friends' kids. The willingness of Western people to either donate to or volunteer at an orphanage has turned them into a big business. Just do a quick Google search for volunteering in a Ugandan orphanage. There are hundreds of results. It's really important to remember as well that orphanages are actually, they've become businesses here. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting when you meet some Ugandans and you ask them what they want to do when they grow up. And I have had a lot of conversations with people saying, I want to run an orphanage, because they see obviously it's a way of making money mm -hmm. through sponsorship, through visitors who bring donations, bring sugar, bring toys, things which actually are often stolen and sold on the black market here and, 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 uh, and in markets. So we have to remember that, that actually we could be fueling something which actually breeds within it as well, some illegal activity, because child trafficking happens, children being procured from poor um, families and vulnerable families for basically to be milked. They like cash cows a lot of the time. Now, you know, obviously there are some well-meaning people here and a lot of people here don't really genuinely know the damage the institutional care is doing to the children because they haven't actually parented one. Perfect Bakshaba grew up at an orphanage that welcomed a lot of volunteers. It was nice having some one actually show some attention and somebody care about you and somebody take you to do fun stuff they took us swimming went to play on the swings went to playgrounds and whatever the sad bit is that after a month or two they were gone mm -hmm. and then you went back to the hall but shawn beans you do nothing all day you clean you dig you do whatever and you just don't really get anywhere either way there's somebody who comes and makes you feel happy for two months pays a person who looks after you a fortune mm -hmm. and then buggers off, doesn't really care whether that money has got to you or this made any difference to your life. It might seem harmless for tourists to spend time playing with kids, but orphanages that allow a steady stream of visitors to interact with vulnerable children aren't acting in the best interests of the child. If you're interested in helping vulnerable children in Africa, Try looking for organizations that support local people who are already doing good work to attack the root causes of poverty. There are also organizations that work to reunite children who are living in orphanages with either their birth families or adoptive families. All children deserve a loving family. Even when high-quality institutions are used as an emergency measure, research has suggested that a child should be moved into family foster care as soon as possible. For me, it wasn't the stories of hopelessness and despair that defined my time in Uganda. The stories that today have stayed with me the most are stories of strong and loving people undergoing challenging circumstances and forced to make hard choices. Just because a Ugandan family is poor doesn't mean a child lacks love. As Western people wanting to help, we need to stop assuming we have the answers and start looking at other cultures in new ways because our heartfelt intentions are hurting families and the very children we want to help.